Yeah, so I want to show you some pictures now from the SOHO satellite which points directly at the sun. One's in infrared, one's in ultraviolet. I believe. These depict or show coronal mass ejections. They're called coronal mass ejections. Right, and what you see is you can see matter being exploded off the surface of the sun into outer space or well, into the solar system. And we have something called a heliosphere, and that's completely full of the sun's particles that it's blown off. Now they get out to a certain distance, but if they're not going fast enough, then they get sucked back in again. The point that I'm trying to get is gravity. I'm trying to get gravity through people's heads. Right. Now the particles are following the gravity, so you see them get blown off the surface of the Sun. They go out to the outer edges of the solar system around about three quarters to one light year away from the star from our, from our Sun. And at that point then if they're going fast enough they'll go out into interstellar space and the, the Sun loses its matter. But at that point then it collapses back into the Sun or some of it lands on the planet Earth, some of it lands on Jupiter, and in one of these pictures, you're so sorry, Saturn. You can see Saturn in the, in the in, in, in its rings in the background. It's quite interesting, but it shows you gravity, and as the matter accretes back onto the star, it regains mass. So it's like going out and in, out and in, out and in, outwards then inwards, then outwards then inwards, then outwards then inwards. It like breathes. Right, so now well, I'm going to show you some pictures of a representation of Einstein's theory of relativity. So here we go, we've got a lattice um, showing how space-time is bent around spatial bodies. Now you've got a black hole there, and you can see the black hole, but it's a funnel. And as you can see, it isn't depicted as anything round and it goes off down to infinity in a great big long tunnel. Now this tunnel looks as if it's going to be, well how long do you think that tunnel is? It could be a light year long. You look at the size of a star and then a planet, which are whatever they are next to it, that is light year long isn't it? Eh? <laughs> so that, mean, that would mean that the black hole would have to be a light year away. Now I'm going to show you a picture of a black hole feeding and we've got these, you can go and have a look at these at the Hubble Space Telescope um, dot com and so on and so forth on the NASA website and you can see pictures of uh, black holes feeding real pictures and of course the black holes in the center and then you have ejectors coming out of it like you can see so quite clearly let's go back to the other picture of the Einstein crap so now for this lattice thing to work properly there isn't just one cone going in there has to be two cones there has to be one going out one way and one going out the other way. Or clearly, Einstein's calculations are clearly incorrect because the way it's depicted is you've got going away from the other two objects and not two going away from the other two objects. Now, let me show you another uh, computational uh, uh, picture of Einstein's relativity, and this is what we call a wormhole. Within that wormhole picture, what you can see is two black holes one at the top, one at the bottom, and then space bent in a U-shape around because of the force of the induction of the two black holes, the, the event horizons of the two black holes. Now, <clears throat> if you understand anything about three-dimensional stuff, you understand that, well, a black hole has got two event horizons anyway, one at the top and one at the bottom, but clearly in all Einstein's equations, half of the universe is cut out instantly and this just proves it, you know what I mean, this really does prove that Einstein is really really wrong because a wormhole has been depicted a little bit like a magnetic field is depicted and if I take you back to the uh, picture of the black hole feeding on a star, 
where's the bench space so you show me the bench space now I've just shown you the two representations of space time uh, represented in in a 3d geometry map inside a computer and then I've showed you the the um, representation of a wormhole in a 3d representation inside a computer now you look at the picture of the black hole feeding on a star here as seen by a via Hubble and you tell me where the bent space is you just show me where the bent space is because you've got a star with a great big gravity field and then a black hole with a great big gravity field you show me where the bent space is you can't see it can you because you have two massive gravity objects the star and the black hole it should look like this now so what you'd get in an Einstein universe is something similar to what you're seeing in this little crappy picture and then in the reality universe where real things happen this is what you would get so you can see the difference between the two pictures one's actually happening and we can take pictures of and the other one is not actually happening and we can't take pictures of who are you going to believe Einstein or people that can go faster than the speed of light because I can go faster than the speed of light Einstein's restricted to the speed of light who do you want to be with do you want to be with idiots that have got no evidence whatsoever to back them up or have you got to be with people like me who will eventually find all the things out and we will find them out.